CP Valley is just past the Solana Beach station and marks the next transition from double to single track. A southbound passes the end of the double track and under Via de la Valle as it leaves Solana Beach and enters the city of Del Mar. Del Mar's northern edge is comprised of the San Dieguito River and Lagoon and the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Many events are held at the fairgrounds throughout the year, including music festivals, horse races, and the San Diego County Fair. An overlook at Dog Beach provides a great view of the coast and the fairgrounds as northbound coaster train 655 crosses over the San Dieguito River and Lagoon, about a minute out from its next station stop in Solana Beach. NCTD and Sandag are in the process of planning for the replacement of the 1931 wooden trestle across the lagoon. The plan also includes extending a second main track across the lagoon and constructing a special events station stop right next to the fairgrounds. The south side of the lagoon is known as C.P. Crosby on the railroad, named after famed singer Bing Crosby, who helped establish the Del Mar racetrack and fairgrounds in 1936. Santa Fe built a Y and spur track that went right up to the fairgrounds for their summer horse race passenger specials. Both were removed many years ago. There is a small siding here, which is only seldom used for train meets these days. From the Pacific Coast Highway Bridge over the tracks in Del Mar, Amtrak Train 564 is seen heading south with multiple new Charger locomotives in the fall of 2018. These locomotives were being tested on 500 miles of trouble-free running prior to full acceptance for regular service.
a high rail truck pulls into the siding at Del Mar to allow other traffic to pass by. NCTD runs one of these vehicles on a daily inspection of the surfline from Oceanside to San Diego. Del Mar's surf station was built in 1910 and was in service until it was replaced by Solana Beach Station. It is still used as a venue for special events. Following the station in Del Mar and the road crossing at Coast Boulevard, the surf line reaches its last segment of coastal running, traveling right atop a steep cliff. This is arguably the most scenic portion of the trip to San Diego. This section of single track running stretches from Del Mar all the way to the north side of Sorrento Valley and is one of the longest single track segments left on the surf line following only San Clemente. The section of coastal bluffs upon which the tracks sit have also been subject to a significant amount of erosion and collapse in recent years. North County Transit District has performed work to stabilize the cliff face, but long-term plans will likely result in the tracks being removed from the bluffs entirely, traveling in a double-track tunnel under all of Del Mar. This was originally scheduled for several decades in the future, but recent bluff collapses have led to the expediting of this project. During the days of the Santa Fe, a wooden footbridge provided an access point for pedestrians to cross the tracks to get to the beach. The bridge is now gone, but the wooden abutments remain in place on either side. A southbound empty vehicle train makes its way along the coastal bluffs destined for the port of San Diego.
For one of the best views of trains and the beach on the surf line, a visit to the bluffs on the very south end of Del Mar is a must. This location is now marked by a stump carved into a sculpture known as the Sunset Seat. Southbound coaster train 640 rolls along the cliffs on a beautiful cloud-free summer morning. Amtrak train 564 for San Diego passes by with the deep blue murmuring waters of the Pacific below. Turning back the clocks to July of 2017, Surfliner Extra Train number 568 is running south along the cliffs with a low-level train set including the now-retired Amtrak Dome Car Ocean View. This was a special train run during the annual Comic-Con event in downtown San Diego to handle the additional passenger traffic. Amtrak 458 leads train 572 under the coast highway and away from the Pacific Ocean as it leaves the city limits of Del Mar and passes into the city of San Diego. From here on, the railroad right-of-way is owned by the San Diego Metropolitan Transit System. Amtrak Dash 8 Locomotive 503 leads the single level set across the Los Penasquitos Lagoon on train 583. Years ago, the San Diegan was one of the first regular assignments for the Dash 8 fleet back in 1991. Nearly 30 years later, in early August of 2018, this was one of the final trips for an Amtrak Dash 8 on the surf line. Rewinding to November of 2015, Amtrak 90230 brings train 583 through with a privately owned dome car on the end. Private cars were once very common on the surf line, but in 2018, the Law Sand Board placed restrictions on their movement and action aimed at reducing delays caused by switching these cars on and off the trains. The only bridge marked for coaster on the entire railroad crosses over the entrance to the parking lot for Torrey Pines North Beach.
several wooden trestle bridges through the Los Penasquitos Lagoon from the 1930s and 40s were replaced between 2015 and 2017. These were bridges installed by the Santa Fe. The original California Southern right-of-way skirted the eastern and northern edges of the lagoon near a now-closed section of Sorrento Valley Road and then climbed up to the top of the coastal bluffs on its way through Del Mar. A southbound Pacific Surfliner crosses one of the wooden bridges prior to its replacement. Torrey Pines State Reserve is located on the coast at the northern edge of San Diego's city limits. The reserve was established to protect the Torrey Pine an endangered and very rare species of pine tree found only in this region and on Santa Rosa Island. The Lookout and Visitors Center in the state park provides a stunning view of the Los Penasquitos Lagoon and the coastline for many miles to the north. On a clear day, one can see as far as San Clemente from here. Trains can be observed as they head inland cutting a southeast diagonal straight across the marsh in the direction of Sorrento Valley. Leaving the marsh and entering Sorrento Valley, the railroad crosses Penasquitos Creek. A wooden trestle was once located here, but has since been replaced by a new double-track concrete span. Sorrento Valley is the fourth station built for coaster service in 1994 and opened on the first day of coaster operation in 1995. All regular in-service coaster trains stop at this station. With many businesses in the surrounding area and convenient station shuttle buses, Sorrento Valley is a big stop on the typical weekday commuter runs. From 2013 to 2018, three Surfliner trains a day also made stops here. As part of the same project that saw the replacement of the Penasquitos Creek Bridge just north of the station, the right-of-way was raised to the 50-year flood level to prevent track washouts and a second main track was added for an additional mile north of the station.
A northbound BNSF vehicle train filled with brand new automobiles passes through Sorrento Valley having just descended Miramar Hill. Imported vehicles from Mexico and overseas are loaded onto trains in National City and shipped north out of San Diego for delivery all over the country. Northbound Coaster 655 is actually heading straight west in this scene, captured from atop a mesa, as it nears CP Scripps at the bottom of Miramar Hill. To the east, the Laguna Mountains of the Peninsular Ranges can be seen in the distance. The line over the north side of the hill has not yet been double-tracked. This is the last single-track section on the way to San Diego. An F-59 PHI leads a southbound surfliner up Miramar Hill and through Carroll Canyon on a sunny fall morning. Leaving Sorrento Valley, the tracks curve to the east for the climb over Miramar Hill. Upon reaching the summit, the route turns back to the west as it descends through Rose Canyon. BNSF's Barstow to San Diego Manifest battles up the 2.2% grade of Miramar Hill on an overcast winter day. This is the steepest grade on the entire surf line. Sandag is in the process of planning for additional upgrades to the Miramar Hill portion of the surf line. In the near term, the section between control point scripts and the top of the hill is planned to be double tracked and straightened to increase train speed limits. Other proposals call for a tunnel to be built under University City, completely eliminating the climb over the hill and reducing travel times by more than 10 minutes.
Miramar sits at the top of the grade. There is a Y here which is used on rare occasion for turning trains. CP Miramar, formerly Control Point Cumbres, marks the beginning of Double Track which continues from here to downtown San Diego. Miramar Yard is located to the east of the Y. This yard used to be served by the Pacific Sun Railroad's Miramar Local. The Miramar Local usually ran in the early evening from Stuart Mesa to Miramar with a return later that same night. It operated one or two nights a week depending on demand from the local industries. Now on the south side of Miramar Hill, a northbound coaster train is heading through an S-curve as it approaches the summit in an area known as Rose Canyon. This is another location where the railroad grade was realigned. The current right-of-way, built by the Santa Fe, hugs the north side of Rose Canyon while the original California Southern grade stayed more to the south. The original right-of-way has since been converted into a recreational trail in several areas. A tired Coaster F-59 fights the 2% uphill grade on the south side of Miramar Hill in April of 2022.
As seen from the south side of Rose Canyon, a surfliner train rolls along heading for San Diego. The trail just below sits on the original railroad grade of the California Southern Railroad through the canyon. A short BNSF Dago comes around a sweeping curve as the surf line turns back to the south near the end of Rose Canyon. High above the canyon floor, University City, the eastern edge of La Jolla, and the new extension of the San Diego Trolley Blue Line along Interstate 5 are all in view. The new trolley line crosses under Gilman Drive and then follows the surf line for the duration of its trip into San Diego. Construction of the Blue Line trolley significantly changed the look of this part of the railroad in Rose Canyon. At the end of Santa Fe Street, the trolley tracks cross over the surf line from the west to the east side on a large flyover bridge. At the same time as the trolley extension was under construction, the surf line was realigned and double tracked in this area. In previous years, the cul de sac at the end of Santa Fe Street provided a nice view of the S curve as the surf line passed under California State Route 52. On a cloudy weekend afternoon in May of 2010, F-59 number 457 pulls a surfliner train to San Diego. The 457 was given a temporary special wrap commemorating 10 years of Pacific Surfliner service. Right in the middle of construction on the trolley and the surf line, Amtrak train 562 rounds a curve near the southern end of Rose Canyon. This is an extra long train for Thanksgiving with a Charger locomotive as well as a soon to be retired F-59.
On a crisp winter day, a San Diego-bound coaster train crosses the first of two bridges over Rose Creek. Looking to the south, behind some businesses along Santa Fe Street, Surfliner Train 565 passes by on its trip to Los Angeles just prior to the beginning of construction work in this area. Another coaster train crosses the second bridge over Rose Creek. Seven years earlier, this area looked considerably different as a northbound coaster train heads through. CP Morena was the former northern end of double track along Mission Bay. Santa Fe had a siding in this location that was torn out decades ago. The replacement passing track was completed in the mid-2000s and then extended both north through Rose Canyon and south into Old Town from 2018 through 2020. Paralleling Interstate 5 on one side and Morena Boulevard on the other, the route makes its way along Mission Bay and Bay Park. A morning southbound coaster train takes the curve under Claremont Drive in the months prior to the completion of the Blue Line trolley. SeaWorld Drive is the location of former Control Point Tecolote where the double track along Mission Bay and Morena Boulevard ended. Both main tracks are now extended across the San Diego River on a brand new bridge. This location is just a couple miles to the east of the SeaWorld theme park. The skyline of downtown San Diego towers in the distance as a Goleta-bound Pacific Surfliner passes under Interstate 8 and across the San Diego River Bridge. A new double-track bridge replaced the old single-track span across the river, simultaneously eliminating both CP Tecolote and CP Fryer on the north side of Old Town. In the spring of 2018, construction was already well underway on the new bridge over the San Diego River. 
The first track of the new bridge had already been completed and installation of the second span was about to begin. Presidio Park and Mission Hills sit high above the construction and Mission Valley. San Diego's Old Town Transit Center is located at the intersection of Pacific Highway and Taylor Street on the northwest corner of the historic Old Town District. It opened in 1995 for coaster service and became a station stop for the San Diego trolley just a year later. Today, all Amtrak and coaster trains and MTS trolleys make stops here. The station is also a major hub for San Diego's Metropolitan Transit System bus service. On the first day of coaster charger operations, southbound train 656 meets northbound train 655 at the transit center. To the south, the line crosses under Interstate 5 one more time for the final miles into San Diego. Charger 5002 shoves a coaster train past the historic 1912-built Mission Brewery Plaza and the former site of the Washington Street Y. The Y was used for many years to turn Santa Fe and later Amtrak San Diegan trains in between runs. Part of the Y has been repurposed as storage for a privately owned rail car. A new multimodal transportation center is planned for the area around Washington Street to give trains direct access to the adjacent San Diego International Airport. An Amtrak Dash 8 locomotive leads an extra-long train 591 north at Noel Street. The extra capacity is for Del Mar horse race attendees that will be picked up in Solana Beach for the return trip to Orange County and Los Angeles.
As seen from the end of Vine Street, the rail line crosses Sassafras Street and under the Pacific Coast Highway to I-5 connector on its journey out of San Diego. In a once-in-a-lifetime meet, Coaster Train 689 with F40-2105 leading the way meets Santa Fe 3751 on its last excursion to San Diego on May 1st, 2010. Nearly 11 years later, on February 5, 2021, Coaster 2101 brings the last F-40 hauled train, number 665, out of San Diego. At Beach Street, a northbound Pacific Surfliner train is beginning its journey to Los Angeles. To the east of the tracks, the former San Diego National Bank building features an eye-catching Wailing Wall mural by the artist Wyland. The mural is now completely obscured by new development in downtown.
Control Point Ash marks the northern end of the historic San Diego Santa Fe Depot complex. There are four platform tracks in the depot area, with track 4, the furthest to the west, typically kept open for freight trains traveling to and from the BNSF yard, which is located about a mile to the south of the station near the San Diego Convention Center. With the depot in the background, train 657 leaves San Diego behind F40 number 2103. San Diego's classic Mission Revival Depot sits as one of the few surviving reminders of the 20th century in this part of the city. The station was opened in 1915 by the Santa Fe Railroad as part of the Panama, California Exposition that was held in Balboa Park that same year. In addition to the Santa Fe, the depot was also home to trains of the San Diego and Arizona and trolleys of the San Diego Electric Railway. In the 1970s, the station was nearly torn down by the Santa Fe, with the space slated for office buildings. Fortunately, public outcry by the Save Our Heritage organization and the city of San Diego was great enough that Santa Fe opted to leave the building intact. It has since been fully restored and is now owned by a private entity known as Santa Fe Depot LLC. Modern construction has greatly changed the feel of the area surrounding the depot over the last half century. Where freight rail yards once sat to the west of the depot, modern condominium complexes now stretch to the sky. All passenger trains end their journeys here. San Diego's blue and green line trolley routes stop at the station and the orange line terminates at American Plaza just across the street. Amtrak keeps a spare locomotive at the station and three to four Surfliner sets are stored at the depot overnight. A project is now underway to build a new Surfliner maintenance and layover facility to the south near the present day BNSF yard. Other projects may see the extension of Amtrak service further south to National City. North County Transit District's San Diego subdivision ends at the Broadway Street crossing immediately south of the depot and BNSF's San Diego subdivision begins. The short BNSF San Diego sub runs from Broadway to National City where there is a balloon track for turning trains and a second yard for loading rail cars with brand new automobiles. 
In one final scene from the Surfline from over a decade ago, Train 582 arrives into San Diego on August 17th of 2010. F-59 number 455 was in charge of the train on this afternoon. Prior to the introduction of the downtown quiet zone in San Diego, the horn of approaching southbound trains could be heard from far away as it echoed off the buildings of the concrete canyon into downtown. Train 582 comes to a stop in San Diego, bringing the journey down the surf line to a close. Nearly a century and a half following the completion of the original California Southern Railroad, the surf line stands as one of the most important pieces of railroad infrastructure in North America. The past few decades have been marked by an era of constant improvement for the route. New track, Bridges, stations, and even rail equipment have all taken the helm, guiding the surfline further into the 21st century. Perhaps nowhere in the United States can one get a better look at the evolution of railroads over the last half century, particularly when it comes to passenger trains, than along the rails of the former Santa Fe San Diego subdivision. The future will likely bring even more modifications to this once quiet line with the addition of even more new track trains and urban development. But if one thing is for sure, it's this. The surf line will continue to play a vital role in connecting people across Southern California for many years to come.